Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. This episode we are going to get into some boat works, but first we wanted to say a massive thank you. Our last video that we put up, we got so much love. Yeah, we're so grateful guys. It's um, really, really appreciated at this time, trying to get this boat back in the water. Yeah, all the encouragement and everyone just you know, commenting, telling us to keep going, it really helped us fuel our fire to get back in the water for sure. And knowing that we have such an amazing community behind us. Thank you to all those people who donated or bought something off of our wish list. We were blown away by the amount of things that got bought on our wish list. And yeah, we just want to say a really big thank you. We'll let you get into the video. Thank you again. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're talking about ground tackle. What is ground tackle? Well, if you're new to boating and you don't know, it's pretty much something that attaches you to the sea floor. For an example, your anchor chain, a swivel, and an anchor. And now they're probably one of the most important things, in my opinion, if you're gonna go cruising. That's something you want to work, last, and hold through any conditions that you face. And believe me, if you're out cruising in remote destinations, limited with resources to weather and all the rest of it, you're going to find yourself in situations where you're praying that this thing holds you to the seafloor. We reached out to Mantis looking for their Mantis swivel. So thank you very much Mantis. I've been hunting around for something like this for a long time now. Why is it appealing to me? When we were in Indonesia, we nearly lost our anchor. And how did we do that? Bad conditions. Well, let me just pull apart this. I'm not gonna give you a full rundown on how to install this because Mantis give you really good, straightforward instructions on how to put this together. And as you can see, while I'm talking to you now, I'll pretty much have it put together without the pin and maybe, say, the uh, seizing wire. So, I'm gonna show you why we nearly lost our anchor when we first got to Indonesia a couple of times. So we experienced huge side loads. We'd been caught in many squalls and storms and bad conditions, sea state where the swell had come in. And if you're gonna be living on a boat or cruising, you're gonna experience extreme conditions at some stage. And if you don't, well, you are lucky. In our case, we weren't so lucky. And we had a side load, which is we swung around and the load was at a right angle to our anchor. It's set, see how this mantis moves around the, moves around no matter which way you pull, no matter which way you pull that, a straight load is applied to the swivel. Brilliant, absolute brilliant ingenuity. They've done an absolute marvelous job in my opinion. Now, our original swivel that wasn't like this, that looked a bit like this, applied, pretty much bent the arms that hold the pin together and the pin came loose and as we lifted the anchor up I could have pulled the pin out and we were this close to losing our anchor. I scrapped the whole idea of having a swivel and I just went to a shackle. But what's the problem with just going to a shackle? So if you spend an extended amount of time at an anchorage and the tide goes this way and then that way and the wind goes that way and you go this way and vice versa and so on, your chain builds up a lot of twist with a swivel until your chain gets all twisted up, which is not ideal. So in this case, it's where the swivel goes, no matter which way you go, the swivel just keeps turning and you don't end up with chain twist. If you're starting out on a journey, my honest opinion on something that is well worth every penny investing your money into is a good swivel like this. And if you do have a traditional swivel that goes down the side like this. If you got the one that runs down the side or just the shackle. So if it's got a fork it's got on a it, pin. the side load goes on it and the pin opens up and you split your, you split that because yeah. the load's like, it, it's not, it's not free flowing like that. So you can put any, Load sure. on that, and in its straight load, oh, yeah. it's a no-brainer. It might be like it's a little bit of advice. Whichever way you go, I can tell you what you do here. This one here, look after it. Take extreme care with it because it's going to be your best friend while you're cruising. Now, this one, what you do with it? 
you throw it away. Don't worry, I'm still got it. I thought I actually <laughs> threw his pen out of it then. I was actually a bit concerned. <laughs> Sorry, Yarn, your pen's still there. All right, we're back on the boat and our first project is... What, are you just having a shower this morning? Just soaping one up in here. Nah. Today's task is underneath this fiberglass headliner we have a patch about this big on our deck that's a little bit soft it's probably I'm assuming because there's no actual holes on the outside I'm assuming there's a hole in here or something and the moisture from the shower has got to it not sure but there is a soft spot it's only little it's that big so I'm gonna remove this I'm gonna source where the soft spot is, I'm going to cut it out, I'm going to put some new board in, fiberglass over it, job done. We'll see how we go. It's uh, one of those jobs, we'll just have to see what it looks like underneath here and uh, go from there. Shouldn't be a hard one, but um, we just want to get out of the road. I've only got one other soft spot at the very back of the boat once we get this one done. Let the fun begin. Honey, can you just promise me something? What you... would you like me to promise you, darling? That you're not opening up a can of worms. Oh, I hope not. I don't have time for a can of worms. There's actually two screw holes there that have no screws. <laughs> so that's an indicator to me that maybe the moisture's got up to where the screw holes are. The first step of this project is removing the roof to have a look and see what is underneath. Okay, that should. Drop down. Whoa, what have we got going on here? A little wet connection. What's that a big chunk of wood for? Just to hold the ceiling. I've just glassed on a, a backing block just to hold the ceiling up. And actually looking at it, the ceiling probably could have been higher. Not that we need any extra height, but we do have light shining through up here. There was an old um, control box to whatever it was. I'm not sure. There's copper line, that must be to our fridge. And our cockpit's over there. Just standard, just wires and bits and pieces, which is no problem. And see if I can see where this little bit of rot is in the deck. And it's right where the screw hole was, I think. Uh, I don't know. I'll take some measurements up top first and and double check but as far as I can see it's right there it's not big it's just a little one there I'm gonna open that up and uh, investigate start with a small hole and then we'll remove the rot and then we just keep going back until we hit solid um, timber it is a painful job but it is good because I've actually got access here we removed the shower skin on the on the, the ceiling liner here and it's it's like right there so it's only a little spot like that, so that spot could have been under anything else, under cabinetry and that, and that's when it becomes a problem. I've got access, that's the first win. The second win is if I open this up and it's not too big, I should have this sealed up today and uh, back in business. This reminds me of my first job. I worked at a dentist, I was a dental assistant. And while Lee was telling that, I had the suction and it reminded me when I went to the dentist. Alright, we need a little prior, a little flathead screwdriver chisel. Alright. Well, there's our piece we've removed. This is our inside skin. It's not actually too bad. Pretty um, good. Pretty good that wet. We haven't really used the bathroom much lately though. The shower. You can see this is, it's not really bad. Oh, that's a little bit there. It's soft.
there's our deck up on top. Our core that we've removed in the middle was here. I've hit back to solid core here, solid core here. Uh, went down a little bit further into there, but I've reached solid, which I'll just fill with thickened epoxy. Um, I've dug all that out. It's solid glass there. And there's the core again. Giving this a rough up, I'll give that a bit more of a rough up. Then I'm gonna put a piece of core back in here and glass all over this and tidy it up. And put this mask back on, it's a little bit dusty. Get the glass to start the vacuum again. Clean up in here and uh, tackle it after brekkie. Just got a little bit of uh, epoxy, just straight epoxy. I'm just gonna wet this whole area out. And then I'm gonna use some thickened epoxy to fill in around the edges. And then I'm gonna put our board in and then I'm gonna glass over the whole lot and we'll call it done. All right, how's it going in here? Looks like it's complete. It's complete. Roof's about to go back on. One more job down. The ceiling back on and I'm gonna to go to bed, I think. All right, so these are Aqua Signal nav lights. They're pretty standard. They've been around in the industry forever. Well, apart from all these external joints that were corroded and rotten, um, I'm gonna run the cable straight up inside and it'll go straight in the boat. So there'll be no external joints. But one of the downside of these lights is that they're incandescent. So what I am gonna do is I can switch these bulbs out for LED bulbs and then we'll have a LED set up. So it's a lot more efficient. But for now, we'll just wire these up and we'll have them working, see what we've got to work with. So instead of having external joints like this, heat shrunk and it's only a matter of time where water will get in, I'll unscrew this fitting and hard wire straight into here and then there's no joints. If anything, I can put a bit of sealant around here. Okay, so we're running new cables from our nav lights down our tube into the anchor locker where we'll join them. Originally, been altered at some stage, but it originally had two wires coming up, one to either um, nav light. The way it was when we found it was one wire coming up, joined on the outside where it was corroded and broken and not working and then made a loop around to the other one at the front so that it made for joins externally. I'll run two separate wires. They'll join straight into the light so there's no actual joins that the salt water can penetrate. It's fun pulling cables through little pipes and we've just run some drawstrings through. We've used the vacuum cleaner to suck them through and then we've had to push them through with a wire and it's a lot of stuffing around for a two minute job. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Drawstrings now connected here and Sarah will pull the cables through. And we've got some new line, new cable that we'll run through and uh, look at wiring it all up. And at some stage, these are incandescent ones and at some stage we will switch over to LED just for the efficiency. But for now, we're just gonna uh, focus on getting these ones going. All right, you wanna pull this through? All right, so I'm down here and what happens is he's going to tie it onto the end of that string there and I'll pull it and then that should pull the wire through and then the wires will all be in place. We are on to our second side. I'm gonna pull it. Pull on the string, here it goes. Nice and slowly he does it. <laughs> That's a bit stuck, can you help? A lot of these jobs. Uh, patience and teamwork. Yeah, can you keep helping it, babe? Can you keep helping? It's a little stuck, can you help it? It's stuck again, stuck again. It's stuck again. It's super hard when you're down underneath or when you're above because you don't know what the other person's doing. So it's important for communication. Oh, sometimes you need help. I don't want to pull it too hard because I didn't want to break it. Oh, it's coming. I just hope it's not. Oh, there it is. You got it. You got it, honey. Right at the edge. A little bit tight. I thought it need a... Um, if you wrap it around your hand, pull, and then I've got to still feed it. Okay. And hopefully it will come through. Okay, you ready? Ah, yay! It's through! It's about a metre through. Oh good, so far this this part of the job is the hardest bit. So now Lee's just got to wire it up, see if the Navalex actually work or if we need new ones. And it doesn't matter if we need new ones because all that wiring will be used anyway. So it was a job that needed to be done. The wires have been replaced. Yeah, so the salty environment is just, it's no good at the best. Of oh, that's got a broken, that's broken. 
Well, that's going to be fun. One of these is broken. Don't know how I'm going to get that out now. Bummer. I'll do something there anyway. Even if I make the join up in here, as opposed to being externally like out here. As you can see here, there was one of these little bolts it was missing from here, but the bolt was in there. So I just cut it on the angle. And I'm just going to solder this as opposed to throwing away the whole unit. I did try my soldering iron, which was about to go on the bin. It's so old and it doesn't heat up properly. Thanks, Gary. He just uh, lent us his soldering iron. I'm gonna throw some solder on this and wire this back up. Should be a 10 minute job now. Handy little tool to have on a boat. This is a gas one, can get electric, but somewhere along the line, you're gonna need to do some sort of soldering, whether it's to get you out of trouble or any, some new work. So my assistant's gonna hold that there for me. Go. Soldered together. So now we have the wire going straight into here and it runs through our tube right down to where we'll connect inside the boat. I'll put a little bit of sealant around that at some stage when I've got the sealant open and um, there's no external joints that were originally here. So that should, should last a little bit longer. Clip that back on, pull it down. Job is done. Now they all just have to wire, join these wires onto wherever it is so that they have power. Hey guys, we came to the end of the video and as usual, we forgot to film the end, the finished product. We did wire up the lights. Here they are. And Lee is onto a new project. As you can see, he's getting some help because he's learning how to weld. So stay tuned for that. He's going to weld his first item in the next episode. So let's see how that goes. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.